Uh, but I hope that uh, many of us are still finding safe ways to get outside and enjoy our favorite outdoor activity safely or having our favorite uh, summer treats, whether that's watermelon or tea biscuits. Um, but um, thank you so much for joining us and spending this time with us. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say um, a major thank you to uh, Shoha Kardatov, to our task force, uh, who has been working diligently with us to help us really glean all the evolving uh, guidelines from the CDC and from the health departments to come up uh, with the safest way for us to open school and get our kids back to school. Um, next, I really want to thank uh, faculty, staff, and the administrative team who have been working so incredibly tirelessly. Uh, people are, you know, are in school over the summer. People are uh, zooming into meetings over the summer. People are doing professional development over the summer, um, really to make sure that we are prepared to have our students back in the fall. And it's um, it's it's really inspiring to see. Uh, and a major thank you to uh, the faculty, staff, and administration who are doing everything over the summer to make sure that we can teach all of these kids in the fall. Um, typically, for those of you that know me, I uh, know that I love to start off with the Dvar Torah, and those of you that know me know that I love to quote Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. The difference for tonight is that I will not be quoting Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. I will be quoting an, an unbelievable Dvar Torah and a beautiful shot of Torah that we heard from none other this week, from none other than our Director of Admissions, Eli Levine, uh, who shared with us a Dvar Torah uh, during our administrator's retreat um, when we got together for a few days to plan for the fall. Um, she shared this beautiful thought about this time of year that we find ourselves in, uh, where we're about to go into Tisha B'Av, where we're actually uh, really grieving the loss of our Mikdash, our central spiritual place, our religious, um, you know, where we, where we observe our religious practice. Um, and we find ourselves between um, entering Tisha B'Av, but also looking forward into Rosh Hashanah, where uh, we are supposed to reflect on the year that was and also reflect on the year that's about to be, where we've learned ways that we've grown and how we can do things better in the following year. And Ellie shared with us this week that we find ourselves in this time where we are, we are grieving what we lost last year. We're grieving what we've lost through COVID, uh, where we've been forced out of our school um, and still looking uh, forward to Rosh Hashanah, to a new year, to a new Jewish year, to a new year in general, to a new school year with all of our students and our faculty um, and really reflecting on what did we learn from this experience, right? We're supposed to come out changed from this whole thing. Um, you know, so through the grieving of the Shabbat, through the grieving of being forced out of our school and whatever we lost in our typical school experiences, both at the end of the year and even now, or over our summers, really reflecting as we think from the Shabbat to Rosh Hashanah about the year that was and the year that is about to be, what is it that we learned? What is it that we picked up? Um, what is it that we're going to do better this year? How is it that we're going to be better with our students, with each other, with our families this coming year? And that is really a beautiful thought to take us into this Shuvah B'Shavah, our Berman's blueprint for a peaceful return to our beloved campus. We have a number of goals for tonight. Um, we, we wanted to, um, first, our goal was uh, to return on to our campus while maximizing health and safety. That health and safety is really first. We want to return to our campus, but we want to do so um, in a way that, that is healthy and safe for everyone, for our entire community. Two is to ensure a uh, rigorous learning program for all of our students to really maintain the educational integrity of our program, uh, both students that are going to be in our classroom as well as students uh, that are going to have to learn remotely. Um, and third, to promote a sense of community and foster the social emotional health for our students and families. This is very important. We had many conversations as we left last year about um, what, what happens if we find ourselves in a predicament where uh, students are returning to the building uh, without uh, full, full summer camp experiences and without those typical summer experiences, what, what is it that we need to do to get them back to make sure that we have um, that, that social emotional health and as well as to foster continuously um, our sense of community. There are three action items that uh, were sent out with the blueprint. Um, one is a virtual learning opt-in. Um, we really need to know by Friday, July 31st, by this Friday, so we can continue our planning for who is going to be um, on, on school campus in person and which students, which families are going to opt to a virtual, uh, to virtual learning. Uh, we will talk more about that tonight in terms of what that looks like. We shared it in our blueprint, uh, but we're gonna talk a little bit about that tonight. Second that we asked for is the middle school dismissal plan, which I will reiterate tonight as well. And third is the bus registration. Um, 
at the um, at the conclusion of tonight's town hall, we are going to send another email with the links to those items. Those of you that already clicked on clicked on them and responded, we've got your responses. We're already seeing names being populated into our spreadsheets, but those that did not, please, we really need 100% participation on this so we can plan for the fall so we know uh, how many students we, we uh, need to plan for on our buses and our classrooms and our virtual screens. So uh, please take a moment. It's really just a couple of questions and we'll really take you just a couple of minutes. Um, so tonight, as we deliver this town hall, tonight's town hall um, is really to um, answer some questions that were still lingering from the last town hall because there were many questions that we were still working through and decisions that we were still making. So some of the information or a lot of the information that we shared in our blueprint uh, is what you're going to hear tonight. We need to run through them because we want to make sure that everybody's hearing the same message, um, as well as to address any lingering questions that have come in from you about the blueprint. Um, if you have not read the blueprint, if you have not read the full email, if you only skimmed it, I urge you, I encourage you, I plead with you to please read it uh, in depth to familiarize yourself. There's many protocols in there. There's many new learned behaviors that each of us need to go through. Uh, so please read it. Please go through it with your, with your family and familiarize yourself with it. Um, we also have received many, many questions uh, for tonight's town hall that are very division specific. Um, we will try to cover in our comments tonight many of the general questions that were asked, but in terms of the divisional uh, specific um, questions, please know that over the next two weeks, um, we will uh, be sending out some dates um, for town halls that are divisional, uh, that are specific to each division, because there are many questions in terms of specific protocols or specific educational questions that really pertain, that really relevant to a uh, division of parents and students. So if we don't get to all your questions, it's please not that we are ignoring them, but really we wanna to try to uh, stay efficient tonight in terms of the information that will help you make your decisions uh, on these three main action items uh, so we can continue planning. And then other questions we will cover in the divisional town halls. So first and foremost, uh, the educational models. Uh, the last time we spoke, the last time we met in our town hall, um, we uh, discussed the idea of staggered arrivals and dismissals and how we would do those and that we were still working through those. We heard feedback from a lot of you and we listened and we heard you. Um, that really caused a lot of stress just in terms of different bus shifts or different shifts for families who have children in different divisions. So we are working on it and we will uh, receive all students when they arrive on campus between the typical arrival time of 8 to 8.15. Uh, there are no staggered arrivals. This should really relieve a lot of the stress for the families who are dropping off uh, children from multiple divisions. Please stay tuned because in the divisional town halls, as well as future communications, we will actually be planning out, depending on which division each child is in, where to drop off that child and how to pull into the, uh, into the parking lot and where, which door to drop off each child, depending on which division they go to, just so we can make sure that we are getting them through the right always and into the right places uh, safely without um, mingling different cohorts. Um, but stay tuned for that specific information, but I want you to know that we addressed that concern. The next concern that people uh, wanted us to address is the staggered dismissals uh, between the preschool lower school and the middle school and upper school. So here's what we were able to do. Preschool and lower school will dismiss at 3.30 p.m. and the middle school We'll, we'll, add, we'll actually end the academic day, the academic blocks at 3.30, but we are going to have an optional study hall until 4.30 p.m. So what this does is if you have a lower school student and you wish your middle school student to be dismissed with your lower school child, then they can leave at 3.30. Um, but if you want them to leave with your upper school child or if your upper school child drives your middle school child home, then they will have the option of staying until 4.30 in the study hall. That is one of the action items. It is uh, critical that you please, if you have a middle school child, that you please respond to that on the survey about whether you are opting for your child to stay until 4.30 or not. Um, some of you is, uh, have asked the question about whether you can, you know, day by day decide 3.30, 4.30 makes things incredibly challenging. If you can pick one, and then in the divisional, in the divisional town hall specific to middle school, we can address that question and maybe come up with some solutions. In the preschool and lower school, 
Um, we are going, I know that I said this in the last, uh, in, in the last town hall, I'm just going to repeat it real quick, which is we are running small cohorts of up to 15 people per room. That includes the teacher and the assistant. The cohorts will be limited in terms of their mobility throughout the day and will not mix with other cohorts. Um, we will obviously have outdoor opportunities throughout the day. I don't mean limited mobility where they won't be able to leave the classroom. They will be able to um, go outside. Um, we, will, we will certainly try to do mask breaks. We are going to try to do PE outside as well. So we will offer outdoor opportunities throughout the day, weather permitting. And, then, and the teachers will actually rotate as necessary and the students will stay in their room. Middle school and upper school. Um, so we sent this out. Um, middle school and upper school are actually going to go to grade level cohorts. That means that as we get into middle and upper school, uh, the academic program uh, becomes even more complex with um, many more uh, teachers uh, throughout the day that, that the students see, um, as well as uh, different levels, different tracks. Um, so we are going to be doing grade level cohorts. That means that um, your child's grade is the grade that they will stay with throughout the day, um, and that they will have a bank of classrooms by grade that we allocate just to that specific grade, and those are the classrooms that they get to um, to move between during the day, but not to any other classrooms that are shared with any other grades. The second thing about middle and upper school is that we are tra transitioning to a block schedule academically. That means that uh, instead of having the eight blocks a day of 40 minutes each, there will be uh, four blocks, four academic blocks per day of 70 minutes um, of every other day, I should say. Uh, we, we are moving to an AB schedule. Um, and we will discuss that more in depth in the middle and upper school town halls, but uh, we will have uh, A days on Mondays and Wednesdays and B days on Tuesdays and Thursdays, which means that you will have those classes, the, the same classes on Monday and Wednesday, and then the same classes on Tuesday and Thursday, and then the AB will uh, flip on the Fridays. Uh, so you'll have an A Friday and a B Friday. Um, this logistically, it decreases the number of student transitions throughout the day. Um, so logistically during COVID, it is a, a big help. But more importantly, academically, um, it, it also just provides for various types of learning and activities. Um, and we can talk more about that in the middle and upper school town halls. Specials and community building activities will be planned during the day. There is a, a block in the middle of the day um, where the kids have their lunch, but then they will have their um, specials and community building activities. And we will talk more about that in those specific town halls. The middle school dismissal plan, as I said earlier, um, the academic day, the academic blocks will end at 3.30 and then we will dismiss everybody and then there will be an optional supervised study town hall that will begin probably around 3.40, 3.45 when the dismissal is done. Um, and that will be a, excuse me, a supervised town hall. Please, that is another action item to submit your middle school dismissal plan. The upper school. So our goal is the AB day block schedule with the weekly rotation that we just said. That, that means in the AB day block with the weekly rotation. Sorry, I forgot to mention this earlier. In the upper school, every week, two grades are learning in person and two grades are learning virtually. Um, and we will, um, you know, we are releasing our schedule to you very soon. So stay tuned for that where we are still working on the schedule and let you know which grades are on on which days so you can plan accordingly. Um, but two grades are learning person, two grades are learning virtually. Um, the first month, uh, we are working on ratcheting certain things up to work us up to that AB day block schedule, uh, but to rotate every, to make sure that every grade uh, rotates through the building um, a minimum number, number of times over the first few weeks and to ratchet up certain things in terms of our technology and our staffing to move up to uh, our AB day block schedule. Um, we are going to give you a, um, you know, for the first month we will release a schedule. Um, so stay tuned for that as well. So speaking of the virtual learning, um, we are installing meeting owls and all in our classrooms. Um, the owls are, um, it's our, our priority, our utmost priority is that any students that cannot be in the classroom, whether that's because a student has a medical condition or a family has a medical condition that does not allow the student to be in the classroom physically present, or if a student has to quarantine for any reason or whatever it is, we wanted to make sure that um, the priority is that students who are streaming into the live classrooms should not feel like they're passive observers. We, we want to make sure that they feel like they are still in the classroom and that they are active participants in the classroom and that their uh, experience is as real as it can get 
um, without being there in person. So the owl cameras, we actually uh, tested a couple things and we settled on the meeting owls in our classrooms. Uh, the meeting owls have a 360 degree um, camera and microphone that actually uh, can, where students can actually see everybody in the room uh, in panorama, uh, but also be able, it actually opens up new windows when students ask, ask a question. So the student actually feels like they can see, well, not just feels, but they can see other people in the classroom as they're asking the question. So it will literally feel as if they're in the room and they're seeing their friends who are, who are making, you know, who are commenting uh, on the lesson, but it, they will also be able to see the teacher. They will be able to see the board. Um, they will be able to see the screen share of the smart board. They'll be able to uh, engage in the learning. Uh, we are also installing screens in the classrooms. Um, so the teacher can actually physically see your student or your child who is not in that classroom to make sure that, um, you know, this is not going to be where, you know, a classroom uh, students is in front of the teacher while there's a screen off to the side where, you know, where the virtual students are. This is where we're going to have a screen where the, where the teacher can see uh, the student or students that are not in that, in that classroom physically. And we'll be able to see them if they have a question, if they want to raise their hand or make a comment or, you know, the, so the teacher will be able to see them as well. I do want to just draw um, a quick distinction between uh, quarantine learning and the remote learning, the at-home learning. Um, so for students that can't be in the classroom physically, but the classroom is going on, this is what they're going to use and this is what they're going to see. And we will actually make a video of the OWL cameras in action and we will send it out to you so you can actually see and feel what it looks like and sounds like. That is the at home or remote learn, learning. If we have to go into quarantine, if a pod goes into quarantine or a class goes into quarantine or a grade goes into quarantine, um, then like an entire class, then it'll be um, what you're used to seeing at Berman at home. It'll be where the entire class is on Zoom. The OWL cameras will be used again when a child is in quarantine um, you know, on their own or when a child cannot be with us, but the class is physically still present. So. Um, I know that there was a question where parents asked, can we just transition? Can we transition back and forth if we want to you know, start off remote, but then we want to come in in person? I think the important thing to take into consideration is that um, the name of the game this year is not just teaching our students, not just teaching them safely, but also the unbelievable level of logistical planning that this takes. Um, so one of the things that we will ask of you, uh, we need to come up with a number of, um, how, how many days notice you should give us if your child is remote and you want them to join a class um, or vice versa if they're in a class and you, wanna, and you want to remove them. Um, obviously, if you need to remove them for a reason, you can remove them. But coming back into class, we just need to make sure that everything is prepared for them to come back in and that the teacher is prepared and that their space is prepared uh, within our square footage and within our spaces. So we will let you know in individual town halls about that question. That's a great question. So thank you for asking. Um, and now what I'd like to do is um, I want to introduce, I know that uh, some of you had an opportunity to meet our new executive director, Shamaria Gassner, uh, but many of you have not had the chance to meet him. Uh, this is definitely uh, a tricky time to be joining a new community uh, when, when we are um, not all together, uh, but uh, Shamaria Gassner is our new executive director. He joined us officially on July 1st uh, and has really hit the ground running. Uh, he came to us uh, from the Koheli Yeshiva in Philadelphia, where he served over the last few years as their executive director. We are very lucky to have him. He's uh, really been instrumental in helping us with a lot of this logistical uh, planning and the operations. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Shmari Gassner, our executive director, who is going to take us through uh, some of the operational and logistics um, portions of tonight. Shmari? Thank you, Rabbi Kastan. Um, I'm very excited to be joining the Berman community. I'm sorry that I'll be, I'm joining in such a challenging time and uh, meeting everyone uh, this way, um, but I'm hoping that uh, soon we'll be able to meet in uh, person. Uh, I first want to thank uh, Rabbi Kastan, the Senior uh, Educational Administration, the Advancement Team, the Facilities Team, the Technology Team. There's been a lot of uh, logistics and protocols and, and acquiring supplies. Uh, it's a very challenging time and everyone's working tirelessly uh, to make all of this possible. Um, we are creating multi-tiered efforts uh, to mitigate risk for our students and faculty um, to maximize health and safety. Um, there's no guarantee that we could um, uh, that 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 the spread of COVID is, is eliminated, 
But with the accordance of our medical guidance team, CDC guidelines, and local health department, we are instituting uh, multiple layers of protection to help mitigate risk. And we have five of them. Uh, the first one is the symptoms check, uh, masks, uh, physical distancing, hand hygiene, and sanitization. I wanted to just spend a couple of minutes on each one of them. Uh, for symptoms check, um, there are two points that we should that you uh, need to be aware of: that students will not be allowed to be on campus with one of the following: either they have a new onset cough or shortness of breath, or they have two of the following uh, symptoms of a fee of, and, and it, it's on the screen of a fever, chills, shivering, uh, sore throat, etc. And I, I don't want to uh, um, want to be time sensitive. Um, but you, and these are the two of these uh, of these um, of these symptoms, and um, if they are experiencing uh, these symptoms, um, we are um, we will not allow the students or faculty or anyone into the building for the day. Um, we are actually going to be having a COVID nurse this year, and we'll be having a COVID nurse station this year, uh, whose primary focus will be on COVID-related uh, um, symptoms and illnesses. Um, the symptoms check um, is gonna come through alert media. Every day uh, you'll be getting uh, through alert media, either through email, if you sign up through text or through the app. Uh, this will be a sample um, uh, communication that will come through. It is imperative that it is filled out. Uh, if it is not filled out, we cannot allow um, the student on campus. Um, it's just asking if there are symptoms and you are confirming that uh, there are no symptoms or if there were symptoms, then uh, our, our nurse will be in touch uh, with you to go through the next steps. Um, one of the questions we're getting is, uh, what determines if our pod is closed? Um, each uh, case is really unique and determined by the Department of Health, by our local Department of Health. Uh, I can tell you that the guidance that they're gonna, that they're gonna go on is um, the mitigation factors that we've implemented what, and making sure that people were wearing masks and people were physically distancing and they um, go on 15 minutes of exposure but every case is really unique and we are going to be going to them through uh, to look for guidance um, if there is a, um, a suspected or confirmed case uh, in, in a pod. Um, in the blueprint, we uh, created this uh, chart. It's really helpful um, to understand what, uh, what happens if there's a positive test or someone has a symptom. Uh, I encourage you to really familiarize with yourself with it. Um, and it's, uh, it's a nice flow chart to let everyone know what happens if uh, someone, uh, you or in someone in your household, uh, tests positive for COVID or has the symptoms. Um, we, the Department of the, the Maryland uh, Department of Education is requiring masks for children's two and up. Um, all of our students K to 12 will be required to wear a mask in the building. Our preschool students will be required to have the mask and we're gonna work with them to uh, for proper usage. We understand it may not be development appro developmentally appropriate for all of our students. Uh, we're gonna be working with them and um, we are going to uh, be putting in uh, mask breaks throughout the day and if there are students who uh, need additional mask breaks, our, our team is going to be working with them individually to accommodate that, um, to accommodate additional mask breaks. Uh, physical distancing is another really important uh, mitigation uh, effort that we are doing. All of our um, furniture will be uh, maintaining uh, six feet of distancing uh, in the classroom. Um, this, this, that will have constant signage reminders. Uh, you can see on the left, uh, you know, something that we're that we're we're going to put around our school about reminding everyone to keep you know six feet apart. Um, Rabbi Kastan mentioned that we're going to have uh, a one arrival time, but this also means that um, we are going to. Uh, probably have three um, or maybe even more locations of uh, arrival time of, of arrival locations uh, for preschool and middle school and upper school so that we're not all congregating and in, in, in coming into the same uh, entrance. Um, hand washing is another really important uh, uh, mitigation uh, fact uh, mitigation effort. Um, aside from the education that we're going to need to provide in terms of reminding everyone to wash their hands and sanitize their hands, we have purchased 70 new touchless soap and hand sanitizer dispensers. We have 80 gallons of FDA approved hand sanitizer with the ability to get more. And uh, sanitizer stations are being placed all around the building. And we have about uh, three, as of right now, about 300 bottles of, um, of individual uh, hand sanitizer with the ability to get more. And it's just, so there will be, if, if, there's a, if there's a need to sanitize your hands, there you won't have to look far to, to sanitize your hands. 
Um, sanitization of the building itself. Um, during the day, um, our team will be um, disinfecting high touch surfaces, which would mean handrails or buttons or doorknobs. Uh, that will be happening four times throughout the day. Um, playground, um, the guidance that we were given from CDC um, is, is using soap and not disinfected, but we're gonna be doing that two times a day. The restrooms are going to be cleaned two times a day and disinfected two times a day. So four times a day, they should be uh, essentially disinfected. Um, and classroom and common spaces at the end of the day will be disinfected with an electric static sprayer uh, system, 360, the 360 Clorox spray system. It's a very high tech um, electrostatic sprayer that um, is also recommended to, uh, to kill any COVID, any COVID germs. Um, we also are installing, uh, replacing all of our uh, HVAC filters from a MERV 8 to a MERV 13. Um, I wasn't aware what this means, but it means that after my research, it means that we are, have a 37% more effective filter and instead of changing it semi-annually, it's going to be changed quarterly. Transportation. Um, we are going to have up to 50% capacity on our uh, buses. Um, windows will be down, weather permitting. Masks are required. Um, we are going to have bus aides on each bus um, who are going to monitor and make sure that there is proper social distancing and masks are, are worn. In addition, they are also going to be checking the alert media page to, uh, to make sure that everyone um, has filled it out. And if, if a student has, and if a family has not filled it out, we, we cannot allow them on the bus. So it's really important that every morning we get into the habit of filling out those symptoms check. The buses will be disinfected after each route, so that's twice a day. And we are asking that families carpool within their pods. Um, the technology Rebecca Stam was referring to, we are also increasing our internet speed because we recognize there'll be a lot more people using internet. It's gonna be six times as fast as it currently is right now. It's, um, we're just going to the max that we can do right now. Uh, in the building, we are adding uh, 19 more access points with improved connection to, uh, to have enhanced uh, connectivity throughout the building to have optimal internet connection um, as we recognize that students may be zooming in or, um, or you'll have multiple people zooming into a, into a different class. So right now we are, we are, in, we are investing in our uh, wireless capabilities and our internet speed uh, to, um, to really give the optimal connectivity. Erica Stein, I think you're on mute. Thank you so much, Maria. As you can all see, um, our entire team is working tirelessly on uh, logistics, on planning uh, a safe return to our campus. Um, please, I remind you about the action items of the virtual learning opt-in, the middle school dismissal plan, and the bus registration. Um, we are asking you to please fill that out by Friday, by this Friday, July 31st, so we, um, we actually have um, the, the data that we need to continue planning. Um, as I said earlier, there will be divisional town halls coming up that will answer many more specific questions. I know that there were many questions that came in uh, for tonight's town hall. Um, they, a lot of them were division specific, um, but generally what we were trying to do tonight is give you a sense of what the buses might look like, what we're doing inside the building to ensure health and safety, all the steps we're taking and the educational models in terms of both in-person and remote um, to allow you to um, make some decisions that, that we need to know from you about the virtual opt-in or not, um, as well as the, the busing. Um, in terms of specific information, we will cover those. Um, but one thought that I wanna leave us off with tonight, um, I know we started with, uh, with a Dvar Torah that has to do with Tisha B'Av, and I wanna end uh, with this thought as well. One theme that we keep hearing throughout our Tisha B'Av experience and that we are sure to hear this year again is the idea of ahavat chinam, of just loving one another. And no, no matter where we go now, uh, we see reminders, not just about wearing masks, but that you wear your mask for me and I wear my mask for you, right? We are all in this together. Our peaceful return to our campus and our peaceful return to return with health and safety for everybody is dependent on all of us. It is dependent on everybody making a commitment that we are responsible to return to school safely, where we can open school safely, and, we were con and we'll, where we can continue to keep school open safely. We have a community that we have to care for. 
we have families with medical conditions and staff with medical conditions. We are making commitments and we are really putting in a tremendous amount of time and resources and attention to make sure that we can get everybody back in safely and to make sure that we can continue to educate our children. What that means is that we, we are putting in guidelines and we urge you to please abide by those guidelines. That means that if we are asking for symptoms checks, please fill out those symptoms checks and please fill them out with accurate information that, you, that we took it, that this is what I saw. And if you're borderline, if you're not sure if it's 100.3 or 100.4, better be, you know, let's be safe. Let's always take the safe route. This is a year where we, we really want to make sure that this is a communal responsibility where we are practicing that Avat Chinam, where we love our community. We want to make sure to keep each other safe. This is all of our children. This is our entire community. We are potting our students, and we know that that means that, you know, we are, we are still going to socialize with people over the weekend and over Shabbat. We understand that. But if you do, we're not telling you that you can't hang out with anybody ever outside of that pod. We're not, we're not, we're not going to do that. But we are asking that if, if and when you do, please continue to do so safely, outdoors, socially distant, um, you know, take, take the precautions that we need to take uh, when we are hanging out together. We want to make sure that we are all pitching in and that we are all ensuring that we can return safely. Um, if we have to call a parent next year and a child is not well and needs to be picked up, um, or needs to get a test, please, this is the year to please help us out and understand that if we call you, if we need you to pick up your child, that a child needs to be picked up um, as soon, you know, as soon as possible. What we're asking for is really within like 45 minutes uh, to have somebody pick them up. So we will be sending out more guidelines. We will have more town halls and more orientations before we return to school. We hope that, I mean, we are on calls every single week with other schools. We're on calls with, um, we have a call with the county um, th this Wednesday. We are continuing to look at our guidelines. The guidelines continue to evolve and we are putting in a tremendous amount of effort to try to get everybody back safely, but we cannot do it without all of you. This is our community. I beg you, please help us by taking the proper precautions. Please help us by following the guidelines that we're putting into place. And if you ever have a question to reach out to any of us, I know that we didn't get to all the grade level and division specific level, um, division level specific questions. We will get to those. Um, my team and I are now gonna get back into further planning by division um, based on what you just heard and based on many of the questions that we received from you over the last 48 hours. Thank you for filling those surveys out. Please fill them out with the action items that we have requested. And I sincerely, and I speak for all of us, I sincerely look forward to seeing all of your children back in the fall and we'll be in touch again soon. Have a wonderful night.